Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Beta FPV Lite Radio 2 radio transmitter. In this video, I'm going to go over its features and specs, disassemble it and show you its internal components, show you how to set it up using the OpenDX companion app, perform a range test, and finally give you my feedback after testing it out. In terms of packaging, inside the box you can find the user manual, the radio transmitter, and a 2S 350mAh LHV battery, which comes inside its battery compartment. As you may have probably noticed, the Beta FPV Lite Radio 2 features a game style form factor. So here you can see how it looks next to the Radio Link T8S, the Hobby Potter WT8, and the TBS Tango 2. The Lite Radio 2 is available in two versions, so you can either get one that supports Bayan Protocol, or the Airfast Sky version, which is the one I have, which supports Airfast Sky D8 and D16 LBT and FCC protocols. In addition, it features real hobby grade gimbals and not toy ones. The gimbal's throw is 19mm, the 3mm stick heads are removable so you can adjust the height and also replace them with custom ones that are going to provide you with more grip. It weighs including the provided battery 228.4 grams. It supports 8 channels so on the top side of the radio transmitter you can find two 2 positions and two 3 position switches. It runs OpenTX 2.24 so you can connect the radio controller to your computer using the micro USB port which is located over here then run the OpenTX companion app and calibrate the gimbals. This micro USB port will also enable you to connect it to your computer and use it for flight simulators and also internally charge the battery. Next to the micro USB port, you can find a 3.5mm strainer port which you can use for connecting the Radio Lite 2 to other radio controllers for flight instruction purposes. On the sides you can find grip patterns in order to make it more ergonomic. And finally, on the back side, you can find two buttons that will enable you to bind the radio transmitter with the radio receiver, change between the different FR Sky protocols in case you have the FR Sky version, and enter setup mode in order to use it with the OpenTX companion app. Prior to releasing the final version of the Lite Radio 2, Beta FPV released a beta version which looks and feels almost identical. The main differences between the two versions are that on the final version, you'll be able to internally charge the battery using the micro USB port you'll be able to switch between the different FR Sky protocols, the added vibration motor, so you're going to get a haptic feedback when turning on or off the remote controller, they added some weights, so the remote controller feels more solid when holding it, and now it comes with a single 350mAh 2S LHV battery, instead of two 300mAh 1S LHV batteries, which were connected in series. Turning on the Light Radio 2 is done by long pressing the power button for 5 seconds, the green LED is going to indicate that the system is loading, red LED indicates that the throttle is not at its lowest position, and in case you have the Afro Sky version after the system is loaded, the purple LED is going to flash in order to indicate the selected Afro Sky protocol. In order to switch between the different protocols, power up the radio controller while pressing the bind button, and release the power button while still holding the bind button after getting the haptic feedback. After making sure that the radio controller is set to your desired Afro Sky protocol, you can enter binding mode by short pressing the bind button which is located on its back. After entering binding mode, the purple LED is going to rapidly flash for about 5 seconds. Since the radio controller is going to exit binding mode after about 5 seconds, I recommend to first set the radio receiver to binding mode, and only after that, press the bind button on the radio controller. Now as you can see, the Radio Light 2 was successfully bound with the radio receiver of the Meteor 75. Everything is working properly, switch A is assigned to auxiliary 1, switch B to auxiliary 2, switch C to auxiliary 3, and switch D to auxiliary 4. In order to use the Light Radio 2 with the flight simulator, first turn it on. Then using the micro USB port on the bottom of the radio controller, connect it to your computer. And as you can see, it was just recognized as an FR Sky Taranis radio controller. Now you need to make sure that all the sticks are assigned properly, and as you can see, in my case, they are not. So depending on the flight simulator that you are using, you'll need to go through the fine-tuning procedure. In case you are using liftoff, click the calibration button, start calibration, move the sticks around, and simply go through the wizard that explains to you how to calibrate the radio controller. After making sure that everything is working properly, hit the save button, and now you can enjoy your favorite flight simulator using this radio controller. As I mentioned before, charging the connected battery is done using the micro USB port, which is a great feature. 
and charging a fully depleted 350 mAh 2S LHV battery using the charging module should roughly take about an hour and a half. Since the Light Radio 2 is running OpenTX, you'll be able to set it up using the OpenTX companion app. First, in order to enter setup mode, press the setup button while connecting the Light Radio 2 to your computer, then launch the OpenTX companion app, and if you entered the setup mode successfully, you'll be able to read the models and settings from the radio controller. I recommend that before you're going to change any settings on the radio controller, backup the radio settings and also backup its firmware. And after that, you can edit the radio settings. So for example, if the gimbals are not calibrated correctly, you can change the settings. And I'm going to leave a link down below to the guide which shows you how to do it. And in addition, you can also edit the settings of the model. And for example, over here, you'll be able to change the order of the different inputs. Finally, when you're done configuring the radio controller, don't forget to hit the right models and settings to radio button. Now you can safely disconnect the Light Radio 2 from your computer, and by the way, it's going to stay in setup mode until the next time you're going to turn it on. In order to disassemble the Light Radio 2, for example, in order to change between mode 2 to mode 1 or change the tension of the gimbals, first disconnect the battery, then unscrew the 8 Phillips screws which are located on the back of the radio controller, and after that you'll be able to remove the back cover. In case you would like to change between mode 2 to mode 1, you will need to move the spring to the other gimbal. And if you'd like to get more tension on the throttle axis, you will need to move this metal part, which is out of the box going to be placed on the left side of the gimbal to the right side, so it is going to generate more friction. So if you like your throttle to be more smooth, you can just leave it the way it is. And if you'd like it to be more rough, move the metal part to the other side. On the center of the radio controller, you can find the RF unit, and a patch antenna is connected to it using a UFL connector. While trying to remove the antenna in order to measure the output strength of the RF module, I ended up breaking the UFL connector, and in case you are going to remove it, you should be extra careful, because I think that they used some glue in order to secure it. Anyway, I sacrificed the better version of this radio controller in the name of science, while trying to modify it in order to add an external module, so this radio controller unfortunately is no longer usable, and I'm only going to use it for spare parts. Now by the way, as I mentioned before, on the final version of the Light Radio 2, Beta FAV added some weights on the sides of the radio controller, so in case you would like to make it about 32 grams lighter, you can simply remove them. After testing the Light Radio 2 for the last couple of weeks with different quadcopters, I can tell you that Beta FAV surely got himself a winner, and this is probably one of the best compact radio controllers that you can currently get, especially if you consider that it only costs $40. So no, it doesn't enable you to add an external module, it doesn't feature whole sensor gimbals, it doesn't feature a built-in screen and supports telemetry, but on the other hand, for $40 you are getting a very comfortable and compact radio controller that supports 8 channels, supports different Skype protocols, will enable you to precisely control your drone and suitable both for farmers and pinchers, comes with a battery that will last for about an hour and a half, and you'll be able to internally charge using the micro USB port, which you can also use for flight simulators, and even features a trainer port that with no modification you can even connect to a crossfire device. As for its range, out in the open using an Sky XM Plus receiver I got to about 1 km, and using an Sky SPI Rx receiver I got to about 150 meters. so both results are pretty much at par with other bigger and more expensive radio controllers. So overall, if you are in the market for a compact, budget-friendly Sky radio controller, you should definitely check out the BFV Light Radio 2, and my only suggestion is that if you are a pincher like me, you should consider getting this type of stick hands, which are going to provide you with even better and precise control. I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.